everyone, Ashley here and welcome to my channel. Today is the day we get to start building Ruby. So if you recall, let me reactivate these. Last time we kind of just broke down what we think we're going to be needing. So we're going to go ahead and start building her today. Now I was originally thinking about making this course a split into a, basically building the front view and splitting into a rotational rig and a cutout rig. However, thinking about it and playing around with it, I'm realizing that to get a good drawing swap rig and a good 360 like deformer rig, I'd be rigging the front view completely different, um, depending on which direction I was taking. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to build this as one course straight through front to, uh, front to back in kind of like a little bit of both. So some elements will have deformers on them to move between the poses while others like hands and things like that will have drawing swaps. Basically the way I would approach this if it was going to be my personal rig or something. So I didn't have a particular setup I had to follow for production or anything like that or a pipeline to follow. So as we're building her, the way I work is I don't do all the drawings at once and then go back through. Um, reason being, I find with the way my brain works, uh, like if it's a long weekend coming up or something like that, if I'm doing all the drawings and I'm not rigging it as I go, when I come back Tuesday morning, I'm not going to remember where I was. And I'm going to have to spend like the first 20 minutes of my day trying to go back through the rig, figure out where I was and where I left off. Whereas if I rig as I go, say I'm working on the shoulders, I know everything above the shoulders is already done. Um, and I'll test and name along the way. So I know I shouldn't have to go back and triple check that until like the very end when she's fully built and I'm doing a once over testing it out and everything like that. So we're going to do it the same way. We're going to build her as we go from top to bottom. So today we're going to start with the hair and the head. And again, I'm trying to keep the lessons to like an hour, a little bit over an hour. So they're quick and easy to manage. So let's see how far we get. And we're going to start with her hair. Yes, I would like to save. Okay, so we looked at her hair as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So since I know that's how it's going to be broken down, I'm just going to go ahead and hide these for now. So it's a little bit easier for me to see. You'll also notice that I've added a color card to this because when you're rigging, I like to test my deformers as I go. So if something doesn't work and say I did the same setup on multiple pieces, I don't have to go back and fix multiple pieces. I fix it on the first one and then know how to go move forward on the additional pieces. So to add a color card in my node view here, I'm going to hit enter. And I'm just going to type in card. There's my color card. I can go ahead and add that, plug it right in to the back of the composite. And then I can even go in and make adjustments to it from there. If you don't have layer properties here, usually by default you'll have camera and drawing. You can customize these as much as you want. Go ahead and hit the little plus button here and you can pick and add whatever window you'd like. I have layer properties there, so instead of having to zoom in, click on that little yellow box, having that come up, I can literally just click on the node, hit layer properties, and I get the exact same information right there. Just saves me a couple seconds. All right, let's create some drawings. If you're using your default halt keys, that'll be control R. My hot key is a custom one of control D. So I'm gonna hit control D and I'm gonna create nine hair drawings. So I'm gonna call them hair underscore. I'm gonna go 01 through 09. Reason being, maybe down the road, the design changes a little bit. Now she's got a tuft of hair up there. So we're gonna have hair 10, 11, and 12. For me, and I have a bit of a past in um, Java and web and stuff like that, so numbering 01, I know everything will come up in numerical order if I were to look at it, whereas if it was 1 and 10, when I look at the file lists in order, it would be hair 1, hair 10, hair 2, hair 20. It wouldn't necessarily line up neatly, so I just go ahead and follow it that way. So I'm going to hit enter. Cool, it's created another drawing. Two, I'm going to go ahead and create nine of these. And for nine, I'm going to hit add and close. 
I'm going to go ahead and grab all of these. And because of the preferences I have, I can middle mouse drag this whole group over here. Hit this little button here. will quickly spread them out for me. If I want to be picky, I guess I could put them all in numerical order too. So if I went one, two, three, four. Cool. Okay, so we've got all nine of these. We want to hook them all up to a composite. So with them all selected, I'm going to hit Control H and it gives me a composite. I'm going to create a second composite. I'll tell you why in a minute. And we're going to hook that up to this node right here. So a quick way to connect if you want, you can click and drag down. But sometimes you can be going across the screen, you have to zoom out a lot so it can become really wide. If you have a node selected and you hold down Alt and you click on another node, it'll connect it for you there. So I want this to be in the front. Now, why do I have two composites? Because this one right here is going to be our main overall composite for the whole rig. That's the last composite before it comes out of the, the group because we're going to group it all when we're done. So this is going to be called Ruby underscore comp. And this one here, because it's the hair, it's going to be hair underscore comp. And you notice I name all my composites underscore capital C-O-M-P. It's just so they're all named the same. So let's go ahead and get drawing. I'm going to use just circles that we're going to adjust the shapes in. Actually, before I do that, let's also create pigs for all of these. So I'm going to select them all. I'm going to hit shift control P and make sure they all get their pigs and they're automatically named to match, which is exactly what we want. I ground um, all my rigs. So each drawing has a peg that way if the animator wants to manipulate one particular drawing they can without creating a whole chain so say you have an arm and this is your upper arm and your lower arm your lower arm follows your upper arm so brain would say you can go ahead and do this which you absolutely can do because then this would move this however say there's some foreshortening or something like that or stretching and the animator wants to make this upper arm longer or shorter, any skew they put on this peg obviously affects us this. So now this one has to be counter animating. So whereas if you had this, I'm going to go ahead and create another peg. So your upper arm has a peg, your lower arm has a peg, and then they go into that there. Now the upper arm and lower arm can be manip manipulated on their own, and then there's still a parent peg to play with. So we're going to grab our circle and we're going to go to our tool properties. And you'll want to kind of test and see what size line you want. I have a steady line six. So you'll have a bunch of defaults here, like say pencil one, you can see it tapers. I work with the Cintiq and I find working with pressure sensitive pencils is just a real pain in the butt because if you're trying to create a uniform look, um, one of the projects I worked on that had tapered lines, they wanted them specifically tapered using the tool to a certain amount. So this just made it really difficult. I just work with a one single pressure weight line and then you can change it in the tool afterwards. <coughs> so if you've got your tools here and you want to create a tool just for this character, like just a pencil preset, I'm going to go to pencils, pick one of them. I'm going to go and hit this little arrow here and you can change your settings here. <coughs> so I have a maximum size of six on my Ruby line. Minimum size, so the smallest it'll go, I want it to be 100% of six. I don't want it to size down to a four or a five, I want it to be 100%. And these two settings you can play with. Um, this will smooth out how much the computer smooths out the line for you. So if you shake a lot um, and you wanna have a much smoother line, some of the 
rigs I've worked on, it's a lot of hand drawing. Um, so if there's a slight shake, it doesn't line up with the line art and it, you have to spend time correcting. So you can get the computer to smooth it out. That's personal preference. So you can play with those settings. But once I have the pencil the way I want, I can either hit this button to update that default pencil. Or if I hit this one with the plus sign, I can name it and it saves it as another preset. So I've got here Ruby line. So you can see I've got my maximum size, my minimum size. And this for me was my comfortable center line and contour smoothing for the way I draw. And then I just want to make sure that obviously if I'm doing any drawing, so if I grab my pencil tool, I'm still using that number six ruby line there. All right, so back to our node view. Let's start making our shapes. So I've got hair. I want to make sure I'm on hair one. I'm on my line art layer. I've got my circle tool. I'm going to grab my line color. And I'm going to kind of create kind of like an oval, like the shape of her bang there. I'm then going to go up here and grab my select tool, or you can hotkey it. Oops, I don't want to have that mark there. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to rotate it and kind of get it to fit as best I can, like so. And then you want to switch to your contour editor here. And with this, you'll see now I can see these little individual points. I can click and drag and change the shape. I can also click on these and I'll get little handles and those handles can be stretched and bent and twisted to help smooth out the hair. So I'm going to go ahead and shape this really quickly. Make sure we're kind of getting what we want. We want it to be nice and smooth and match up with our concept art. Cool. Now I have it set up so my pencils and shapes do not automatically create color art. Reason being, I found that when I draw it, a lot of the times afterwards, I'll add additional points, move it around, tweak it, and the color art doesn't always follow. So I end up just deleting the color art and making color art layer again. So rather than spending the three, four seconds to delete the color art and make a new color art, I save those couple seconds and just create the color art as soon as I've got this the way I want. So to create the color art layer, I've got my select tool. I've got my thing selected here. If I go to tool properties, I can create color art that way by clicking this button. Or I have a hotkey setup of a uh, shift star that would create the color art for me. So now if I go to the color art layer, You'll notice I've got a blue line here. That's my color art. And you'll notice it extends into the middle of the line art layer. Important to remember that when we get into auto patches because that'll kind of help you understand what an auto patch is actually doing. So my color art's going into here. Now on my color art layer, I can grab my bucket, my hair color, fill it. We've got that there. Now actually I'm gonna want this reference on top of this so I can still see it there we go on top of the art I'm working on okay cool so we've got that but now you'll notice it's not a solid line all the way around here so you can set it up to cut a couple different ways um, if the lines were constantly changing on these you could create like a little patch that cuts the line Really, her bangs are just going to kind of bob up and down. I can't see any point where we'd want to drastically change the shape of the line or anything. So I'm actually just going to taper the line of this drawing. So there is no black line up here. How do we do that? Our pencil editor tool. So if I use that and click on this, you'll notice now when I zoom in, If 
fat line here with these two little dots on either side. So you've got your center line and then lines there that change. So I want this part of the line to be the full thickness. And on this end, we want it to be zero. So I'm going to come up here and hold down control. And it's going to let me add a point. Okay, that works. But if I were to now make this disappear, so if I hold down shift and click on one of these two dots, it'll pull them in together. It's tapering from here to here. We don't want that. We want the line to stay thick up to about here and then just taper between here and here. So let's add a couple more points. I want it to basically be tapered to zero here and taper between here and here. And then on this part, you can see you don't see the line, so it's probably tapers ending somewhere around here. So I'm just going to pick a point hidden behind that where I think the taper would be. Now I'm going to hold down shift, grab these, pull that in. So that's zero. And that's zero. Now, if I really want to, if I don't like the way that line looks, I can come in here and I can adjust that, but then it makes that area fatter, which we don't want. I can pull that in there and kind of just smooth that area if, out if I want. Same with this one if I really wanted to. So now our piece of art looks like that. Sweet! So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to do the exact same thing on these other three here. So I'll just go ahead and speed the video up. Oh, actually, before I do that, we're also going to name this drawing. <clears throat> So right now, the way I have it set up is as I add drawings, they're just numbered one, two, three, four, five, six. When you get drawings from rigs, it's nice to for the animators to look at just the little thing here and know what drawing is for what piece. Maybe they wanted a particular el hair element that was in the profile view in another view for some reason, so they want to be able to swap to it. So you want to name your drawing so it's easy to grab. So. I have the hotkey of control R for rename. The default is control D. But if I have this selected and I hit control R for rename, you'll get this pop up here for one. And this is where I can rename it. So for rotations, you want to include like front, profile, side. Um, but then sometimes it can mess up the order that things are popped up. So I also include numbers in them. So because the front view is the first view, I'm still going to keep the one, but I'm going to add FR to it. Reason I'm going to use one FR and not like zero or something is I might have like a resting pose. For example, this default mouth on the concept art, I will probably name that like zero because it's just a default one. It's not actually a lip synced mouth. So by naming this one FR, it gives me the ability to, if for some reason I need to add other ones down and I want them to come up further down the list, I can name it like zero something and it'll pop up there. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead, like I said, I'll speed it up. I'm going to go ahead and do that for the rest of these three. And then once we have these four bang pieces, we'll get to adding some rigging elements to them.
Okay guys, so we've got these four pieces built. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all four of these on a composite. So I'm gonna select them all in Control H. Get rid of those connections there. Hook it up. So that way, if I'm working, I can go ahead and hide them all if I need. And we're gonna name this Fangs Comp. Cool, so let's get some rigging on these. Looking at her other poses and what I think I'm gonna want her doing just for like some lip syncs and some fun, really all these pieces are gonna do is they're gonna like squash and stretch and like flip around so the animation pigs could do squash and stretch sure but they're not going to be able to make it like twist and bend so we're going to want to put some deformers in here so they can twist and bend first things first is i'm just going to change the order of these because you can see this drawing right here that one is supposed to be that there this particular one if i go ahead with the select tool and just control click it'll grab that drawing for me. I want that one to be in front. So I'm just going to grab it and pop it in front there. And then it looks like from the art, this one here should actually be in front of that there. Boop. There we go. Now they look like they're in the correct order. If we want to, we could reorder them so they match this, but I'm going to keep them in the numeric order here and they'll just be swapped on there. So for this, we need to create deformers so they can kind of like bend and flop. We could use a curve deformer or an envelope deformer here. Personally, I prefer using envelope deformers, but I'm going to show you both and what the differences are. So if I've got hair one, which is that one there, so sorry, I want hair two. I'm going to go ahead up here and I'm going to hit add deformation chain reason I do that is because I like to have all my deformation chains named so whoever is grabbing it knows which each one is. Um, I'll show you what will happen if we don't hit add deformation change first actually because then that way I'll show you also how to fix it and clean it up if you do do that. So if you don't hit add deformation chain and we have the drawing and I go to my deformation tool and I go ahead and create a curve deformer one, two, boop. I've got the deformer there. If I go into it, there's the def deformation on it. So that's always there. There's no default or anything like that. That's just no matter if I click off, if I come back, that's the deformer that we have. And I can't change anything from here. What you actually want is you want like a default and the chain on and if you have different chains. So to fix that, if you notice you do that and you just have the one in there and you have no drop down or anything, that can be remedied. We've got the drawing. This time I'm going to hit this tool up here and you're going to notice now it says deformation 2. So if I click this drop box, I've got default, transform 1, transform 2. And now if I go in here, I've got a transformation switch. I've got one. I've got this spot here, which is transformation two. If you like hover over the nodes, it'll give you a thing. Transformation one, transformation two. And it's there's nothing there because I haven't created a second one yet. And then this one that's slightly different color, that's our default transformation, so port zero. I don't want transformation two or transformation one. But you know what, here's the thing. Let's uh, let's create another deformation here because this is also, if you ever create a deformer that you don't want, let's now make an envelope deformer here or something. Huh. So now I've got that deformer on there too, but now I, I actually, I don't want that deformer for whatever reason. 
So now, like, how do, how do I go and get rid of it? So you can go in here, find it, delete it. So yes, it's gone, but it's still there. Okay, so let's unplug it. Back to right view. Go back to it. Oh, no, it's still up there. Why? Because it's still got a port for it there. So clean that up. I'm going to grab the node, give it a little shake. Gets rid of that. So now when I click back to it, I've got my default transformation, which is just nothing, just the pig. And my transformation one, which is my deformer there. Which that is how we want it set up. But now let me show you the difference between a curve and an envelope and why I like to make my little flippy curves out of an actual envelope instead of a curve deformer. So if I wanted to animate this, little piece of hair. I can grab this piece here and wiggle it. I can move this. Cool. But the way this offset operates in a curve and an envelope is completely different. So right now, yeah, I can grab that and wiggle that. But if I grab this end, it basically works like I peg it up and moves the entire thing. So then I can grab this little thing and I can bend it that way. So depending on what thing you're working on, you might want to be able to just grab this, twist it that way, and do that. That might be the exact movement that you need it to do. I'm going to go back in here, unplug, get rid of that, give her a little shake. I'm going to add a new deformation chain. Now I'm going to show you what an envelope would do. So if I come up here and I grab the envelope tool, I'm going to, same spots, I'm going to make a point here, I'm going to make a point here. I'm just going to set them up like that. Now you'll notice there's no piece back here that's like a grab and rotate handle anymore. So if I go to my animation tool, this still works the same. I can grab that, I can squash that. But now this piece, if I grab this, it just moves that end. This point stays fixed. And I bend it. So if I wanted to rotate, I could set my peg to be here. And then my peg would handle the rotation. Whereas, then this would be the squash and bend. I prefer this way, just because of that ability. So I can just kind of like keep that in there and squash it that way. Another thing I want to do as I want to check and make sure this isn't going to break anything. So like, what I mean by break is if I really bend this, you see that breaking there. Now that can sometimes just be a glitch, or it could actually pop up in the render view. Sometimes you'll see stuff breaking in here, but it doesn't break in the render view. How you can check that? Um, is if you come down here, you switch from this gray flower to this blue flower. And that's our render view. So you can see it does kind of mess with the line there, just like in there. So you kind of look at it and go, okay, how much is it going to actually move like that? Because what you can do to play with it is if I go back into the tool mode, I can go in and I can change these handles here. So now if I go in and animate it, notice if I bend this, it takes a lot more for that to break. So I might actually just go ahead with that because that seems to work for just a little bit of movement that we want it to do. So we've got our deformer, we've got, when I click on this, we've got a drop down, but I want to name this something that's going to make sense for the animators and anyone else using this after the fact. So this little button up here, if I click that, I'm going to get a box where I can rename that. And what I'm going to call it is going to be curve underscore E and V. 
because it's a curve and it's an envelope. But now the other thing is, as we add more drawings, if we make any new drawings, those deformation changes are still going to show up in it. So another thing I'm going to add in case we do other drawing substitutions of this is it is a 1FR curve envelope because it's the curve envelope and it's for this particular one here. Cool. So we've gone ahead and got that. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and do that for these other one, two, three remaining pieces of hair. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quickly here. All right, so we got our bangs set up here. That's looking pretty good. They've all got, as I click through, I'm checking up here. We've got that. Now, oh, wait. So what we're going to have to do here is we did rename this one 1FR, one so that's good. That's there. Um, but now you'll notice these are named 1. We want to change the name of those. So now there's going to be a little bit of an extra step because we didn't name these ahead of time um, to reassociate them because I'm going to show you what's ha going to happen here. So if I go here and I hit rename because I want to rename that drawing 1FR. I copy that. Okay. You notice when I go back to this now, that um, it goes to a default transformation because it was associated with that other drawing. So now if I go ahead and I go here, okay, there, there, that's what we want to see. Now we've got that. So it's just going to be a step here. Again, I'm going to go to, I'm going to rename this 1FR. I'm just going to reassociate the deformer there. Paste. There we go. All right, bangs are done. So another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a peg here. So I'm going to shift select all four of those. Control P because I want one peg, there to be one peg that I can use um, to move the bangs as a whole. So I'm going to go ahead and rename that bangs under, oh, sorry, dash P. There we go. Now the last thing I want to do is I'm just checking through. We did the naming, we did that. The right curves are coming through. We want to set um, these pivots. So when we're animating, we want to make sure that all the animation is on a peg. And it's going to pivot from wherever that peg is. Drawings have pivot points and so do pegs. We always want to use the pegs pivot point. So one thing we're going to do at the end is we're going to change all the drawings to basically have their embedded pivots of these. 
I'll kind of explain that right at the end because rather than doing this along the way, I just do it to all the drawings right at the end. Um, once I've got the front view fully set up, like all the drawings I'm gonna make done, then I will swap the setting on the drawings. So at that point, I'll kind of explain what that does and what it is. All we need to know right now is we want to set where all of these pegs are. So to do that, up here we have these advanced animation tools. We want to grab this rotate tool. And if I zoom out, you're going to see there's a little pivot here. If I were to try and grab and animate with that peg and say rotate it or something, it's rotating from this peg. I want it to rotate from here, so I need to move that peg. Now you can, animators can temporarily move a peg just for like a shot if it's like, you know what, where this peg is, it's really annoying for me to use. I'm gonna just move it temporarily just for this to get it to move easier. You can do that. But as a whole, you wanna set these peg rotations up to be the, the main control for your animation. So you can see the little spot there. This is the tool you want to use. I have yet to understand why you need to use the rotate tool, but the rotate tool is a way to permanently move your peg. If you move it any other way, the second you swap back to it, it's moved. So we're going to grab this. Now if I come down here, you'll notice when I go over top of it, I get a crosshair with a P. I'm going to grab it. And I'm going to put it where I think I want it to pivot from, which honestly is probably right about where that is. Oh, ah, you're the peg for this one. There we go. Now I can, if I have the rotate tool here, you can see I can test that out. I think that's a good rotation point. I'm going to go ahead and do this for all of them. So all the pegs are default set to zero, zero right here. So they're all going to end up being found right there. I'm going to, maybe here. No. We're going to go there. You? Kind of going right up here. This one. I think I'm there. Yeah, it's a good spot. And then the overall peg here. I think we're just going to kind of position right in the middle of the bangs there. So this is one of the things where when you're going over your rig at the end, you also want to triple check. So when you're checking like names of drawings, that all the deformer chains are associated, you also want to check and make sure that all of your pegs, none of them are set at that default position. None of them are still at um, zero, zero down here. You should have a position on all of them down there. So that actually, let me show, go back into that so I can show you. This is the layer properties for a peg. So you got your name of your peg. Um, we want to make sure position is separate, not 3D. If your pegs are being created with 3D, um, check my preferences video. You can have it set up so it automatically um, goes to separate, which is what you want. And then we've got our scale here, rotations, skews. That's all through the animation peg. But this here is the pivot location. If that's set to zero, zero, that means that's a peg that was missed, um, the position was missed being set, so you want to just go ahead and fix that. You can get scripts, so at the end you can just run a script and it will check all of the pegs and it'll spit back saying whether or not you have some missed. A um, little bit above and beyond, actually later on maybe we'll kind of touch on that. All right, so we got the bangs. Let's now do the back of her hair, because this will involve getting some cutters done. So this big part of her hair, I'm going to want that to be the back of the hair, I think. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five. So just like when we created these, except we're not going to taper the lines or anything. To get these lines here, we're going to use cutters. So as you move these circles, the lines get cut. So I'm going to grab my circle tool, make sure I'm on line, line, and I'm going to go ahead and create a circle. If I hold down shift, alt, 
just like when we were doing the pivots, I'll get a nice even circle. I'm going to go ahead and position this. Ooh, I think my hair is a little bit off center, so I'm going to actually follow it more like that so it's perfectly round. Cool. Then I'm going to create some color art. Grab my paint bucket. Paint it. Oops. Did I not create my color art? There we go. Perfect. So now we've got our hair there. I'm going to remember to rename that. Now for these pieces of hair, her hair doesn't change shape a whole lot. It might bounce a little bit. But because of that, I'm not going to worry about putting deformers on that part of the hair. The squash stretch and kind of deformations that happen with the hair, um, those can totally be done with just the pegs through skewing and manipulating those. I don't think we need to add weight to the rig by adding an envelope deformer around this for simple adjustments to it like that. Now, basically these other four pieces are the exact same thing, an orange circle. So in this drawing, I'm not going to copy and paste a drawing node. Don't copy and paste a drawing node. Um, it takes the timing with it and a bunch of other things. We'll get into copy and paste specials later. That's okay, but don't ever just control C, control V in the node view. I mean, there might be times when you do want that, but not in this case. So in this drawing, I've got my select tool. I'm going to go ahead and grab the circle and I'm going to control copy. But then I'm going to go into my next drawing. I'm going to paste it. And then I'm going to hold shift. I'm going to scale down the circle. This just saves me a bunch of time making the other pieces of her hair. Cool. Got our four pieces there. Let's go ahead and rename these quickly. Awesome. So now we've got those all named correctly. Good. But what we want is this line to cut. And actually, you know what, to tidy this up a little bit more, I'm going to add... Do I want to add another composite? Yeah, I will. So I'm going to select all of these. Control H. And that's just going to be the back of the hair. Sweet. Okay, so remember I mentioned, remember how the color art line comes about halfway into our line because it will inform us about what an auto patch is and how an auto patch works. I'm going to go ahead and add an auto patch here. So what an auto patch is, is the auto patch is cutting the color art by the line art. So the color art comes out to here, but what the auto patch is doing is it's just spinning out this part here the color art up to the line art edge. So it can be used to patch things. 
basically if, so we've got this in front here, which I'm gonna put to the back for this. We want these lines of her puff to be hidden behind this. So really we want this orange circle to be on top of those. So you could easily do that with an auto patch if you take this, because we still wanna have the line art and color art there. But then this line art being cut by the color art Pay attention to this one right here. If I plop this in front in the composite, the line goes away. So I could even like all the way to the front. Cool, it cuts the lines. We're done. Mm, yes and no. <laughs> so this could work for a really basic setup. The problem is going to come when you start shifting pegs in Z depth. <coughs> so right now, if I were to take this, if I move it forward or back, <coughs> you'll notice now the line is showing or revealing. Okay, so why don't we just create a whole bunch of auto patches that will then cross. So depending on where they are, um, they'll be covered. You can um, do that. I find an easier way um, is you can actually just get it to cut the line art. So as opposed to an element being like plopped on top of it. So like see if we went like this and I'm going to get a composite of these. I'm gonna plop those down here. So this auto patch is in front here. And then say we want this auto patch, their auto patch, so the auto patch of these little puff balls to be in front here. You still kind of end up with the problem because of the way it's set up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and undo all of that. So rather than having the auto patch like spat out as a layer, I will use the auto patch to cut stuff. So it will cut that line art instead. So this circle here will actually just cut that line. So it doesn't matter where it is in Z depth, this shape is cutting those lines so they won't be there in the first place. So in order to do that, we've got to split um, these elements apart. So like this here, we want a line art for it and a color art for it. down here. Actually, I'm just going to put those into a comp and spit it out here. And what we want is we want this line art to be cut by this here. So we also need a cutter. I'm going to hold down alt and kind of slap that below here. So looking at a cutter here, you'll notice there's a couple different ports on it. This, whatever's going through here is what's being cut. So our line art, this line art is what's being cut and the color is kind of still being spat out. This is what's doing the cutting. We want that auto patch to do the cutting. So right now you can see cool. That liner has been cut. If I invert this, the auto patch, the line's only being exposed where the auto patch is. So you can see if I zoom in here, 
being cut right there. So the auto patch being the color and up to the line right there. So you can see that's where the line is ending. And really, we have the auto patch there. We want to do this. Oops, let's uninvert that. For each of these. Now, because they're nodes, we don't need to worry about doing a copy and paste. But this <clears throat> would be something that could be handy to have as a template. Now, whether or not you want to create this template as this whole set here, where you've got the peg, the drawing, line art, color art, cutter, and everything all together there. So when you're creating drawings, rather than create drawings, you can click and drag in, you can do that. Um, or you're creating the drawings and dragging just this element in its personal preference. I personally like having this as a full setup here like this. Um, but we already have these elements created. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste this across to set up the system. And then I'm going to show you guys how we could go ahead and use that as a template. there we go. <clears throat> so now we've got the same setup on all of these elements, but this auto patch needs to be plugged into each and every one of those. There. Now the advantage of doing it on each individual one, you'll notice if we wanted the hair to have some overlap, which we kind of do on this one here, those lines will still be visible. And also looks like you should actually be in front of you. There we go. So now you can see we've got that line from that bit of hair there. But I'm actually going to adjust the size on that. I think my concept art's a little unsymmetrical. And you know what? I kind of like the way that looks, so I'm actually going to go back to this one here. And kind of do the same kind of. Design on that. Where are you? This one. That, we're going to scale her up, hold down shift. Now we've got the same kind of line happening on her puff hair there. Perfect. Awesome. So we've got the hair built. But now let's do some cleanup in this node view here. So I'm just going to check and make sure, yep, our hair is named what we want. We didn't need any deformers on it or anything. But let's kind of clean this up because then we can save this as a template. So I'm going to go in here to my layer properties. And I'm going to call this hair underscore 06 underscore L A line art. I like having each of these named to what they're connected to because sometimes it can get a little spaghetti-ish. So this just means it's easier for me to locate or if I wanted to search for anything that had that element in it, I can find that. I'm also going to change the name of you. to cut in capitals. Oh, I had my cap locks on, let's fix that.
Now, if I'm doing an invert cutter, I would say INV cut for invert cutter there. And then this is here underscore 06 comp. So now we're all nicely named. And I'm just going to quickly go through and do the same thing for all of these. So I'm just going to go ahead and speed this up. Okay, so we've got everything named neatly here, Ooh, except for this guy here, here 05 patch. That's going there. Now if I want to be really neat, I can go ahead and like grab these here. get them to neatly line up. And then we've got this one here with the auto patch that's connecting over. So how do we want to make these templates? So I like to have, when I'm rigging, I've got my rigging notes, my little library down here. Um, rather than in here hitting enter and pulling up a cutter node or enter hitting up color art, I will actually just have them all in a library down here. So even though they're accessible through here, I can just go into my library, click and drag in what I need. So as a little supplement here, let's go ahead and create a couple templates of things that we're going to use. Uh, and then we'll go in and we'll clean up the templates too. <clears throat> so for example, this. <clears throat> I'm going to control copy this group here and then I'm going to go into my library, right click, paste. And then what do we want to call that? Ooh, actually, get rid of that there. Let's make sure that that was the only thing selected. Control copy, paste it in. There we go. I was getting a little concerned because the name was off. We're going to call that, uh, drawing L A C A. So I know it's a drawing setup with line art and color art and a cutter ready to cut the line art because that'll be something that I commonly do. Um, with arms and legs and ankles or other elements uh, that they're cutting in. Now, word of note for the way that I'm doing an auto patch with this, I'm using the auto patch to cut. It works well in this case because the two elements that I'm patching together are the exact same color. What can happen if you have elements that are different colors or if there's other things happening? Um, Sometimes you can get this weird hazing between the lines, between the like line line and the color because that auto patch is between the line art and the color art. So in those instances, you might actually want to cut by the color art and kind of layer stuff between um, the line art and the color art and split them through. We'll probably do that later on with some elements of the character. Actually, we might even do that with the eye. Um, but that's just a note that in this case, the auto patch would work for the hair, but there's other ways you can also go ahead and do the cut. Okay, so we've got that line art and color art set up there. I'm going to want a cutter, be able to just grab cutters. Cutter. I don't have an invert cutter, but I will want an auto patch.
And actually, let's individually add uh, a line art and a color art node. Ooh, why did that come up as auto patch? Let's make sure that I grab the right element here. Control copy. What are we doing here? Control, copy. There we go. And we'll want a color art. I spelled color art wrong there. Let's rename that. There we go. So we've got an auto patch, color art, cutter, this setup here with the comp, um, line art, and that big reference comp that we made. So I'm just going to quickly, before we jump into that, wrap up what I've got going on here. So I'm going to go ahead and add a peg to all of these. I'm going to shift select all the pegs. I'm going to go control P. Layer properties. So this peg is going to be called hair BK for back dash p but we want to set the pivots for all of these so again we're going to come up here and grab this so the pivot for like the whole hair i'm going to like position right in the middle here and we've got you can see it's highlighted in red there I'm gonna stick all these pegs right in the middle of the hair puffs and now this hair back I might actually want in the exact same position as this <clears throat> so if you want to do that um, there's a script you can use or you can do it by hand so if I'm in this peg, and I go layer properties, I could literally just copy and paste this. So I can go here, control, copy, to here, paste, control, copy, to here, control, paste. And then if I'm in the camera view, those are in the exact same spot. Alternatively, there's actually a script um, in Harmony that is uh, uh, copy pivot and paste pivot here so you can add those by this top menu bar here is our scripting bar so if you right click on your bar and select scripting you'll get this little drop box here well this little menu bar if I go here this is where I manage my scripts there's all the Toon Boom scripts here and what I can copy over. So you can see I have this in my toolbar already. So you can search and find copy pivot and paste pivot. And it's just like the toolbars. So if I find something and I want to add it within this copy and paste pivot JavaScript, there's two functions. Copy pivot, paste pivot, which I already have there, which is why you can't go ahead and mess with that. Um, disable drawing pivots. Boop. So you go ahead there, and then you can move that over. And that'll execute a script. So you could add copy and paste script here. I'm going to go apply. Cool. You'll notice this one that I just added has an icon. These ones don't, but I believe this one is my copy pivot. and That's my paste pivot. Okay, so looking at here. 
layer properties. I'm just going to put this back to zero. So now if I click on it, that's default positioned. That's got a position. I'm going to go on this peg. I'm going to click on the copy pivot. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to hit paste pivot. Ta-da! It rounds it a bit. So you notice how many decimal points there are. So that's a 229779, 223. They just kind of round it for you. But now if I go to camera, I mean, it's essentially the exact same pivot. I'm also going to go ahead now and, oops, there we go. That is the puffs. I'm just going to add a backdrop to this so it doesn't get too crazy. So I have a hotkey for that. I'm going to select everything and I'm going to hit F12. Alternatively, if you have everything selected, you can come up here, insert, backdrop. And I'm just going to go ahead and leave it black for now. I'll color code stuff later, but I'm going to just name that hair. And I'm going to just leave it at that, actually minus, I'm going to add one more master peg to this because we've got the bangs and the hair. So if I select the bangs and the hair, control P, select the bangs and the hair. Get one more peg here that I'm going to call hair underscore M dash P underscore M being it's a master peg. So that peg controls all of that hair. So we're going to go here, here, and we'll just keep all three of those in the same. There we go. So last thing we're going to do in this video is we're going to clean up our little things here for future reference. So I'm going to click on the auto patch. Actually, I'm going to save this. Right click on auto patch. And I want to edit template. Okay, so you can see the green windows. So you know we're in the template mode editor. Now why do I want to go ahead and make any changes to this? Well, what we can do to make it easier in the future is if I go ahead and to layer properties and just call it XXAP. Why would I want to do that? I'm going to go ahead and save. It's not an action template, it's just a node. And I can close that. Why would I do that? Because now if I were to click and drag the auto patch into the scene, we've got XXAP. Say I drag a couple different things in. I've got up here. Find and replace script. So if I were to click that, I would tell it to find XX and replace with, say that. Ta-da. So I could bring everything in, select it all, tell it to find XX and change the name and it automatically renames everything for me really quickly. So we can do that with all of these. So if I've got the color art, I'm going to go ahead and edit the template. Here we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to just change that to XX. Save. 
And then we're going to go ahead and do that for all of these. So again, I'm just going to speed it up until we get to this drawing one. So I'm just going to quickly do that for the cutter and line art. And then I'll kind of show you guys what uh, you want to do for the drawing and line art one. Okay, so I quickly went through and I just did that same adjustment with the cutter and line art following the same process. But now this one right here, because there's a drawing with it, um, we'll just want to do a little bit more cleanup on it. All right. So the big thing here is you notice when I click on it, there is a drawing that exists and there's a palette. So not cool. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actually delete this drawing. I'm going to create a new drawing. And I'm just going to call it XX. Add and close. I'm going to get rid of that peg. And I'm going to create a new peg. So it's also the pegs at 0, 0 then. I'm going to use that find and replace. So all of these here. I'm going to find and replace hair six underscore because I just want to replace that with this. Okay. Now you notice that's all changed, but we still have a palette in the scene. Now we don't want to be bringing in another palette, especially if like you've worked on a project or something like that. You sure as heck don't want to accidentally have a palette from a project you've worked on or something floating around in there. Um, so that's where we're going to come up here and we're going to go file, remove unused files. And you'll see there, there's the palette that we don't want. We're going to go OK. Now we've just got a clean setup here. And then if we're bringing it into another scene or something like that, you can cut and paste. You can remove stuff. So maybe it's just a straight through drawing. You don't need these. You can delete them. Um, but this saves those couple little seconds. To have that ready to go. Okay, guys, last, last thing. Actually, last thing now. We're going to use one of those templates that we made, these guys here, to finish the setup of the hair here. Because what's happening right here is the line art of these little puffs, as you can see, is being cut by the auto patch of the hair, which is exactly what we want. But what happens if we start nudging things and then the hair, this big piece of hair, ends up in front of these puff balls? That line is going to show. And we want that line to be cut by each of these. So we've got to go ahead and set up a network there to cut the line from here. So using that setup we just made, so the drawing, line art, color art, I'm going to bring that in. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of those because we already have those elements there. And bring it on over. And hook that up. And bring it down because we want it behind the puff, so I'm going to bring it down. Actually, to show and make sure that this is working, I'm going to put it in front of the puffs for now. So you can see that the line art's cutting. Then I'm going to use that find and replace to rename these. I'm going to select these, find and replace. I want to find and replace the XX. And I want to replace it with this node named hair05. Perfect. So what's happening here? We want the line art of this to be cut by the auto patch of this and this, and this, and this. So you would think, like, just starting here, let's just pull in an auto patch. And we want it to come from all of these, so let's just go ahead and take the auto patch from there and plug it in there. Nope, doesn't work that way. Because we've got all these different pieces kind of coming through. It's pulling a composite that splits and everything. The auto patch is looking at the information from this drawing. 
So it needs to be hooked to, well, that drawing. So we can basically bring all of these into a composite and from that composite auto patch it. Um, or we could have an auto patch on each of these, which I like having that because then it's easier for me to see what's going on. So if I pull an auto patch in here, our line art, our color art, and now an auto patch from that. And this one's going to be renamed Hero 6. And we're going to need one for here. So I'm just going to kind of tidy these up so it looks a little nicer. The auto patch from here. And this one is going to be Hero 7. And we're going to do this for all of them here. I'm just trying to keep it nice and organized. That's going to be Hero 8. The only reason I'm doing this by hand is it's just as quick as if I did the find and replace because each of these has to be named something different. Okay, grab the auto patch again. Connect it up to here, and you're going to be named Hero 9. Okay, so we've got the auto patches there. Now each of these auto patches needs to go into a composite. And actually, let me organize these so it's nice and neatly organized like the rest of them. Each of these auto patches has to go into a composite. So we're going to grab this one, and I'm going to control click all of these. And then I'm going to hit control H. because we want all of them to come together to cut that line. But now with this one, because we don't really want level pushes and stuff like that, we basically want to create one flat shape that's going to be cutting this line. I'm going to actually change this composite. This is one of those times we actually want it to be a bitmap because we want it to be flat. So I'm also going to name this hair puffs comp. Actually, I'm going to call it cut comp because it's a composite, but it's going to be used for the cutter. And we're going to plug that right. Let me bring up the camera here so we can watch. I'm going to plug that right into there. Ta-da! And the line art is cut. So again, I want this to be behind the puff, so I'm just going to reorganize that there and enlarge this box so it fits. And now we've got, so if I'm going ahead and let's say I've got this, you can see it's automatically cutting the lines for us. So we've got the hair done. Uh, if we wanted to, we could group these. When we go at the end to clean up the rig, I might go ahead and group these just to make it a little bit neater, but kind of learning how this works, you can see the layout and how it's working there. What we're gonna move on to next, because this is getting a little bit over an hour now, so next we will do the just setting up the head and the ears in the next video, and we'll focus on getting the eyes done. So we'll want the eyes cut into the eyelids there um, and blinks and things like that. So, hope you enjoyed this, hope you follow along okay. If you have any questions, feel free to add them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. But I'll see you guys at the next video where we keep building uh, Ruby's face.